Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this session, we are going to learn about dynamic memory allocation. This dynamic memory allocation can be done with the help of stdlib.h library. So in this library, we have four standard functions, malloc, calloc, free and realloc. Using this, we can allocate the memory dynamically. Let's get back into the details. First of all, let us see what is meant by dynamic memory allocation. Okay, so dynamic memory allocation is nothing but it's a procedure in which we will be allocating the memory or the size of a particular data structure during runtime. Okay, so you know the difference between compile time and the runtime, right? Okay, so so far the arrays, whatever we have studied in C, everything arrays or the simple variables that we have created, everything, there we have used dynamic memory allocation, sorry, static memory allocation itself. What is meant by static allocation or what is meant by memory allocation at compile time? So for example, if I declare a variable int a, a comma b, so two variables I'm declaring. Okay, if we take the size of integer as 4 bytes, for A, 4 bytes will be allocated and for B also another 4 bytes will be allocated. For A, 4 bytes are allocated and for B also 4 bytes are allocated. Okay, so this is done when you are compiling. Okay, so this is done at the time of compilation itself. You can't modify the size that is being allocated to this. Similarly, let's see. Uh, suppose if I want, if I'm declaring a character array, say suppose, okay, so I want to store the name, car name of 20. Okay, so I have declared an array of size 20. Out of this, I might not be using, out of this size, okay, here I have declared a character array of size 20, but Will I be using all 20 locations all the time? So it is dependent on the name, the length of the name. Suppose if I give my name, okay, Sriveni, hardly how many characters do I have in my name? Only seven characters, but I declared an array of size 20. So this much of memory is allocated to this array, but out of this, hardly I'm using seven locations and remaining 13 bytes of memory is getting wasted. Okay, so since I am not fixed in my mind, what will be the input that I will be supplying for this name? So because of that, only seven bytes I'm utilizing and remaining 30 bytes I'm wasting. Similarly, if you see the case of a matrix addition, okay? So say, suppose we have declared a matrix of size 100 by 100, say suppose, okay? So are we... When, when you give the input, have you at any time used these 100 locations? Have you used? No, right? So we will hardly use this 100 locations. Out of this, we try to give the input as simple as possible, right? Say, suppose, out of this 100 later on, I change the size of my array and I have given my input only a 2 by 2. Okay, so two by two is, so then two rows, two columns. Here also two rows, two columns, hardly four into four, 16, 16 into four, only 64 bytes only I'm using. Okay, but actually how much is allocated? 100 into 100, 10,000, 10,000 into four. Okay, so actually 40,000 bytes of memory is allocated for this particular matrix, but out of that, how much have I used? I have used only 64 bytes. See how many bytes of memory space we are wasting when we are allocating memory during compilation time. So to avoid this or to utilize the memory in an efficient way, we will see how much is required. Say suppose I want to... Uh, while running the program, I have decided that I will give my name as the input. So then I will allocate the memory only 7 bytes. Instead of allocating 20 bytes of memory, I will allocate only 7 bytes. Or else if I have decided the size of my matrix input will be only 2 by 2. So then I will allocate 
only for 64 bytes during runtime. Okay. So this can be done using dynamic memory allocation. Okay. So either I can assign the memory that I required or I can change the allocated memory also during runtime while running the program while supplying the inputs. I can change this value. So that is possible in dynamic memory allocation. Hope you have understood the purpose of dynamic memory allocation. Okay. So instead of wasting the memory, I just want to allocate as much as required at runtime. So that is the basic purpose of using dynamic memory allocation. So I, I think all of you are aware of uh, uh, the memory allocation in C. So just try to recollect. Otherwise, I'll provide you a slide here. Okay, so for this memory allocation, as I told you, we have four functions under the stdlib.h header file. Okay, so can you recollect this memory allocation process in C programming? Okay, so this we have discussed in the earlier classes. So whenever you are saving a program, Okay, so internally the memory will be allocated like this for your program, starting from lower address to higher address. Initially, all the text, so the code that you have given everything and initialized data. Okay, so when you save and compile your program, .obj file will be generated and after linking, .exe file will be generated, right? So that, that data, so that comes under this text and initialized data and suppose if you have any global variables or any static variables so that will be stored under uninitialized data okay so this will be initialized to zero by default by the dot exe file right so during compilation this process will be done and on top of it we have the memory space for stack and heap okay so here we also discussed that the space will be commonly utilized by stack and heap. If the stack size is growing, then the memory allocated for heap will be shrinking. Suppose if the memory allocated, if you have more variables which utilizes this heap area, so then the space for stack will be shrinked. And on top of that, we will be having the command line arguments or environment variables. Okay, let's try to brief this. So, okay, so in short, we can see the instructions and global variables which comes under permanent storage area. On top of it, we have the free memory that can be utilized by heap. And on top of it, we have the space for local variables that will be stored in a stack. Okay, so now compared to the previous one that we have already learned, what comes under this permanent storage area is the memory that is allocated for the text segment, the data segment, and BSS. Okay, so just I'll show you the previous diagram once, this one. Okay, under BSS, we have the uninitialized data, text segment, and initialized data. All this part, we are, these three segments we are calling as permanent storage area. On top of it, we have the space for heap and stack. Okay, so under heap, we have the free memory, under stack, all the locally declared variables will be stored. Okay. So now, if you see the memory space between the two areas that is available for the stack, that is um, in between the permanent st storage area and the stack, we have the area for the heap, right? So we have the area. So that we will be using for heap. So what will be stored in this heap is all the dynamically allocated variables. Okay, that will be stored under this heap. So that means when you are talking about dynamic memory allocation, which part of memory location are we using? We will be using the memory allocated for the heap. Heap storage area we will be using. And the size of this heap keeps changing depending upon the number of variables that you have for which you are allocating memory dynamically. Okay. So hope you followed. In the next session, we will be learning about how do we allocate this memory dynamically using malloc. That's it for this class. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. And if you like the video, 
Do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.